Good morning guys, what a way to start the day. Today Apple refreshed the MacBook Pro lineup and what a change it is. They've implemented some crazy things, things that we didn't think would come this year and more. So let's get into that and a huge Apple leaks like the entire 2018 Apple lineup has been predicted and leaked by Ming-Chi Ko. So we'll talk about all those things, starting with the new MacBook. Now this thing is a huge upgrade. For the wallpaper alone, I wanna to upgrade to this. Those are beautiful, I want those. I want my hands on those as as possible but yeah Apple did update those and this was out of nowhere no keynotes no events they just dropped it and this is the biggest update to MacBook Pro I mean since the actual refresh in design and there are new 13 inch and 15 inch models and a wide variety of changes in them so the main change to these is of course the processor upgrade and this has been predicted by Ming-Chi Ko so these are getting the eighth generation Intel processors and sooner than later Apple actually implemented 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM that is to go alongside these. Now we've got the new updated i5, the i7, and an all new i9 six core processor. That is ridiculous. You can spec this thing all the way up to 2.9 gigahertz and that's six cores at that speed. Ridiculous. Supposedly there's a larger battery to go alongside this larger processor, not even larger, just more core processor, but that has not been confirmed or I haven't read about it for sure just yet. The smaller 13 inch does now get a quad core processor that's been rumored for the longest time and Apple just dropped that overnight out of nowhere. You can get up to 32 gigabytes of RAM now, which is very nice for the video editing, for the heavier applications. This really now lives up to the pro name. So you'll be able to use that in a wide variety of applications. So I'm really happy about that. That 32 gigabytes of RAM and the six core processor, that is a killer combo. There's also been a huge graphics upgrade. So the 15 inch now gets the Radeon Pro 555X or the 560X, a choice between the two. And the 13 inch gets the Iris plus 655 graphics. So huge speed upgrades, but it doesn't end there. Apple upgraded the SSD as well. It's now faster, capable of speeds up to 3.2 gigabytes per second. Also, you can spec it up to four terabytes of storage now. Actually specking it, you can get this thing to near $7,000. And then with software, you can cross over that over $7,000 for a MacBook. Believe it or not, this is not the most expensive MacBook that Apple has ever offered or a portable computer. Uh, as before in the past, it's actually crossed over with inflation over this price. So it may seem expensive, but it has been more expensive in the past, if that makes you feel any better. There's also some new hardware changes as well, aside from the internal changes. So first off being True Tone. Apple has implemented that technology from the iPads, from the iPhones, now available on the MacBooks, where it has built-in sensors, likely in the display or around the bezel of the display, that'll adjust to the ambience of your environment and adjust the color temperature of the display accordingly. It's a very great feature to have, and especially with such a large display, it certainly makes sense here. I'm very excited to see that in action. And there's now a new third generation butterfly keyboard. So it's a little less clicky sounding. It still has the same amount of travel, but it doesn't sound as loud. So they optimized that to made it more like the keyboard that everyone liked from the last generation MacBook. And I'm more than positive they addressed the issue where the keys would get stuck as they had, they had enough lawsuits with that so they wanted to fix that as soon as possible in their butterfly keyboard and there's a new apple t2 chip it's now even more secure maybe even faster we don't know that part just yet but apple does tell on their website that it is more secure so all around some crazy upgrades speckable up to seven thousand dollars depending on how much you want to pay but the base model starts exactly at the same price as it did last year so depending on how far you guys want to go you can either drain your entire bank go into debts you know whatever you need. But those wallpapers, man, if anyone can find those, I want my hands on those as soon as possible. Those are beautiful. And Apple is now selling a separate eGPU alongside this new MacBook. It's got an AMD Radeon Pro 580 inside of it. It's selling for $699. It's officially sanctioned by Apple and built by Blackmagic. So I'm sure that the support for it will be very good. And if you really need that raw power for any application you might need, this is definitely a very good option. And to go alongside this very expensive MacBook, Apple actually did release new very expensive sleeves. These are leather sleeves starting at 179 for the 13 inch and 199 for the 15 inch models. They come in several colors. You've got the blue, the saddle brown, and the black. Very beautiful, but very expensive. And yesterday, Ming-Chi Ko published a new report on Apple's entire 2018 lineup and what he believes will be Apple's release strategy, and he basically leaked it all. So no need to even wait for the keynote. So this is it right here. With the iPhones, I've covered this a lot, but I'll just go ahead and summarize it real quick. 
There will be three models, two of which will be the OLED models. One will have an LCD display, the cheaper end model, of course, 6.1 inch. Uh, there'll be the iPhone 10 plus, the 6.5 inch monster. And of course, the refreshed iPhone 10 at 5.8 inches. They'll have an A12 processor, more RAM, four gigabytes, three on the cheaper end model. And the two higher end models will have dual lens cameras. The cheaper one will have a single lens camera. And of course, all those new colors potentially on the cheaper end model and new gold color on the iPhone 10 and 10 plus models. As for the iPads, Apple is working on a new 11 inch and 12.9 inch refreshed iPads with of course that all screen display, no home button, gestures to take over the home button's control, just like on the iPhone 10. And it'll have face ID to replace touch ID with the home button. And the Mac mini, Ming Chi Ko says it'll finally be refreshed after three and a half years. There have been no updates for this for the longest time. And now Apple wants to do a quick spec bump. And he did predict that the MacBook Pro would be getting processor upgrades and hey, what do you know out of nowhere, Apple did just that today. And also the regular MacBook will be getting the same treatment, a processor upgrade, and likely some hardware changes very similar to this new MacBook Pro. So I'm guessing the butterfly keyboard third generation, maybe Touch ID, possibly. And he says a new lower priced MacBook to replace the MacBook Air will be arriving this year as well. So it'll be around a 12 inch, very similar to the MacBook, but a cheaper end version of it. And the IMAX. Ming Chi Ko says the IMAX will have a significant display improvement. What that could be, he didn't elaborate on, but I'm guessing that the bezels will be shrinking. That's what I hate about the IMAX, it's just the bezels are way too thick. It could look so much more futuristic with just an inch reduction on those bezels. So he says a display improvement is happening and of course the processor refresh. And the Apple Watch, so lots of details on this one. He says that the 38 millimeter version will be growing to a 39.9 millimeter version and the 40 to a 45.2 millimeter version. That equals roughly a 15% in screen size and it's very likely that the chassis will stay the same size, it's just the screen will be growing. And potentially micro LED could even happen this year from other sources, but uh, that's unlikely to happen. We're still probably a couple years away. And there could be some new health monitoring features such as an EKG, which measures the electrical activity of your heart using two fingers on the side casing of the Apple Watch. There could be a potential feature where it could measure your heart rate at all times instead of just during an activity session. So this would require some new sensors on the back side. And that's one of the potential rumored additions. And Ming-Chi Ko says that the battery will be growing in capacity. So the actual chassis is rumored to change. It'll be the first redesign for the Apple Watch. So Apple is likely to stick a larger battery in there to accommodate for the new features and whatnot. There'll also be a solid state button on the side. So the physical clicky buttons will now be very similar to the iPhone 7 and above iPhones button. And Bluefin Research has published a report that says the iPhone SE2 has officially been internally canceled. So any hope that an iPhone SE2 with a form factor of the iPhone 10 or even a refreshed version of the current iPhone SE is gone. Apparently, Apple has scrapped the plans for it as it just doesn't fall into the lineup anymore. I completely disagree with this. I know there's still a lot of love for it, but Apple's looking at the numbers, what really sells, and the iPhone SE just doesn't make sense anymore. The iPhone 7 is gonna be replacing the 6S at the cheapest end model at $449, so that's likely to be the replacement for the iPhone SE. And a couple other tidbits. So I found this one quite amusing. I'm sure the people experiencing this did not, but there's been this new crash where the Taiwanese flag emoji would actually crash the application and potentially your iPhone when it would pop up. And this is because of censorship in China. Apple caters to the government and they remove the Taiwanese flag from iOS if your uh, phone is based in China, the region. So this is what you see and this is what the person that sends you the flag sees. So in any application where you would use Taiwan, type in Taiwan, it would immediately crash the application because that flag would show up. So that was kind of funny, but Apple patched that in iOS 11.4.1 and that was one of the under the cover fixes. They did not, however, reinstate the flag. So that one still shows up just like this. And there's been a serious bypass discovered in iOS 11.4.1 and iOS 12. So another feature that Apple added to 11.4.1 that we didn't know about at the time is the USB lockout feature. So originally Apple added it to iOS 12, where if you don't interact with your lightning ports for a certain amount of time, it locks it out. So that way government agencies or the gray shift gray key tool can brute force into your iPhone using the unlimited passcode attempt bug. So there's been a new bypass discovered where 
where if you were to use one of these, a lightning connector adapter and plug it into the port, as long as the phone hasn't went into that lockout mode just yet, it'll keep it perpetually unlocked. So that way they can keep you know scanning and using the brute force passcodes. And that's kind of scary. And the research firm that discovered this is saying it's more of an oversight than an exploit or anything like that. So Apple will be addressing this without question. And yes, Apple takes their leaks very seriously. There's a very big and good reason why we're seeing less and less leaks this year over last year, but still we're seeing a good amount, I'd say. But anyways, a former employee that was working on Project Titan, this is the autonomous car and the software for it, actually left the company and stole a bunch of data and physical data itself. And Apple actually started an internal investigation and the FBI has charged him with trade theft. So that's up to $250,000 in fine and a 10 year prison sentence. So yeah, don't be stealing from Apple and don't be leaking anything from them. They will put you in jail. All right, guys, there it is. So the new MacBook Pro models are available to order today, shipping later this week. And Apple's entire 2018 lineup has been detailed. So that's coming in the fall. Thanks for watching, guys. That's the latest on Apple. Peace.